Well, hello there. Okay, uh, I want to show you some stuff here. Um, Joanne Fabrics face mask scam uh, is really a trip. There's like a multi-millionaire, billionaire, whatever he is, that owns it. And exactly the time that the coronavirus hit, uh, they wanted to close down all the stores that weren't necessary. Um, and it, uh, so they were trying to close him down at the Joanne Fabric stores. And uh, uh, so all of a sudden, he's, he put on his website, we're giving away free kits to make face masks. And they had a big picture of it, and it was like, we'll mail it to your house, or you could pick it up in store. And um, it comes with the directions, and the thread, the elastic, the fabric, all that stuff. And so, I had to go down to, to purchase some things anyway. Just a couple cheap things, because I was nervous about how far that was going to progress with the coronavirus in the next seven days around the world um, because might need to, you know, hold on that money for fuel and food. So I just need to pick up a couple very relatively cheap items. And I only had a little bit of cash on me, actually. Uh, on the, other than the fact I was just laid off from one of my corporate jobs, which was really, really scary because they still owe me that money today. Um, so we went down to Joanne Fabrics, and it was slammed. And uh, it, it was just wall-to-wall -wall people. And um, nobody was, you know, social distancing. Nobody was wearing masks or gloves or anything. And um, uh, I had asked the manager um, where the kits to make the face mask and, and she says oh you just have to pick out the fabric and then we'll cut it so okay so then we were looking for some fabric and then when we brought the fabric up to the counter I had brought bought uh, brought up like three bolts of stuff that was like a kid's fabric and then just a plain fabric and then a happy fabric and then they said oh no you can't use this and uh uh, I said, well, I mean, what's the deal? Oh, well, you can only use the ultimate discount stuff in the back of the store on those, those little shelves right there. And it was like all of like 15 bolts of fabric were back there um, that were end bits of bolts, basically. They were just, they, they just had some yards in them. And then they had a couple full bolts that were just like Darth Vader type looking fabric which I mean if people are getting sick and dying I really didn't want to do any black um, uh, with like skull heads on them or something um, and so I wanted something a little happier because I want to do adult ones and possibly children ones um, but at that time they were promoting the adult ones so there was a girl young girl that was standing watching the cutting tables and the fabrics just flying through I talked to an older lady, and she said, yeah, I'm making them too. And everybody there was, like, doing the face mask thing. And they were just getting, I mean, yards and yards of fabric. It was just flying out the door. And um, she's, I said, well, where do you do with yours? And Because I'd asked the, the manager of the store. I said, so we bring them back here. And she said, oh, no, no, you just, you go ahead and donate them. I said, you donate them? Uh, okay. And so, um, I talked to an older lady that was waiting to have her fabric cut, and she had, like, 30 bolts of stuff, and, and, uh, I said, well, what do you do with yours? She said, oh, I make mine and send them to Tennessee. Now, this is in Florida, and you would think that they would donate to the local hospitals in the state of Florida or in nearby cities before they would ship to Tennessee. Um, uh, so... That was kind of odd. But anyway, and I kept watching this one girl, and she had this shirt on that had this uh, vulgar language on it, and I thought it was pretty raucous. I went, hmm. And she and her boyfriend, who wore a beard, um, 
he was going to wander around the store, and then she kept watching and watching and watching. It was kind of like she was listening to what was going on and then kind of molded right into the thing. Um, so they grabbed a cart after she stood around there for probably 35 minutes right next to the cutting tables, watching all this fabric fly through. And, I mean, just, I mean, yards and yards of fabric. I mean, they're just throwing bolts away, okay? Um, these people were bringing, you know, like six and eight bolts of stuff up. And they're just, you know, unrolling the entire thing, folding it up. They're not even measuring it, nothing. And and, and then, you know, you, you're supposed to go up front. And then they bag it for you. They don't ring it up or anything. And then you just go out the store. So, anyway, I told the manager, I said, well, um, okay, so, uh, you're supposed to have the little directions thing on how to make it. She said, oh, no, you can go on, on the website, Joanne Fabrics, and you can get it there. And they have a little video. She said, but it's not right anyway. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, we've had a nurse and a doctor come in here, and they said that, uh, it's all wrong, that it won't work, and... Uh, you have to put, you know, interfacing in it, uh, and, uh, um, uh, I said, well, okay, so what interfacing you're supposed to use, and then one of the sewing ladies said, oh, it's the one over there, and I said, well, you've got, like, 12 different interfacings. I mean, I've shopped in the store for years, even when I look back in Memphis, I shopped in that store when I came down here to make gowns, and, uh, she tells me which one it is, and hell, the damn stuff is like ten dollars a yard. And I said, I said, so okay, you're paying for that too, right? Oh no, 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 you have to buy that. And it's like you guys got me to come down here to do free face masks, and you want me to buy a ten dollar yard interfacing to put in it. I mean, why are you advertising it's free, and I've got to turn around and buy? It? And I'm sitting there thinking this is a Joanne Fabric scam. They're going to come down and bait you for a little bit of stuff, and then you got to buy all the rest. So then I had grabbed some threads, and because I wasn't going to use my own stock, um, because it said in the article on their website, which is that's changed now, um, that, you know, the thread, the elastic, all that. And I said, and what about the elastic? Oh, we're out, and you can't find any in Fort Walton. And I said, um, okay. Well, I've got you know, rolls of it, rolls and rolls, big commercial rolls of it, because I commercial sew. But anyway, um, you know, I guess I could use a little bit of my rolls to donate into it, right? So, um, otherwise, uh, um, on their picture, they had facing, um, like bias tape on it. I said, well, what about the bias tape that they show on their website? Because I, I looked at all that before I came down. So, yeah, you can use bias tape. It's okay. So I went over and I picked like three main colors, like a white and a a black and a pink um, to go with the fabrics that I would be running. So I um, got that and I got about, I think, six or seven packages because you don't get a lot in that because you've got to make tie ties on the bottom and tie ties on the top of this thing. And at that time, that was for the little rectangle one, okay, which is a piece of junk anyway. But um uh, so I had got those, um, I had got the thread, and they didn't have any bulk thread, they just had a little spools, and you know, those are expensive, they're not cheap, and so I got some spools of thread, I think I just bought black or something, and, um, so, when I go up to the counter, uh, they said, oh, well, they're not, uh, Joanne's isn't paying for the, the, the bias tape or the thread. And I'm like, what? I said, well, I mean, what part are they exactly paying for? Oh, just the fabric. I said, so they're not paying for the bias tape, the thread, or the interfacing. And they're telling you that you have to use this heavy interfacing. When on the website, it's just got two pieces of fabric. They're sewn together in a rectangle with pleats. And I said, this is just amazing so to me it's just you're just scamming a bunch of people that that sew to come in and make a purchase with their gift so they can make money on people and make money on a pandemic i was really disappointed 
And so that's why you're keeping your stores open so you can hustle more business out of people. People need to be careful over food and and toiletries and things like that before they need to be buying fabric. If you're doing a total donation thing, then you should be doing a total donation thing with all the supplies, okay? Um, they claimed in that in the uh, website that they had sewing machines and all the stuff that you can do it at the store and all that, but of course you can't do that because there's not six foot rule so that everybody can go sew and they didn't want people in groups of 10 or more. So of course you can't do that at their store. Um, that's a big no. So anyway, I we went to the cutting table and I'm like, damn, I said, I don't know. And there was a black lady there and, and she was like standing way away from everybody. And and she says, well, I'm doing mouse too. She says, but um, I use this lady's YouTube. And she flips her phone around and I start to walk towards her and she like steps back. And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, it's really hard for me to see from like nine foot away. Um, can you give me a name of this person on YouTube? Well, she's a nurse and she does the masks and, you know, that this is what you're supposed to be doing and da 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 da. You need to check out her video because that's the way it needs to be made. And I said, well, what about the part where they're not, like, you know, buying all the other stuff? She said, well, you just have to buy it. And I'm like, geez. I said, you know, the facing that the manager told me about, it's like $10 a yard. She's, yeah, that's the right one. And I'm like, oh, man. So, um, and I mean, these things, they start at, like, six, eight inches. And... And if you're going to put one piece of facing in there, I mean, you can only do so many with the yard, okay? Um, probably about, you know, four or five, maybe, I guess. Um, I'm just guessing off the top of my head because you got 36 inches in the yard. And then, and then the width of interfacing is a lot narrower than standard fabric. Um, so I'm like, oh, wow, you know, this is such a scam. I just want you to buy stuff. So anyway, I went up to the cutting table and I'm state I had to stand there and wait. There were so many people just huddled all around. There must have been fifteen people there. And the girls are just running this fabric off. They're not measuring it, nothing. They're just rolling these bolts out, pulling the centers out of them, throwing them in a pile, and I mean I'm just watching yardage upon yardage just going. Not being cut at all. Just, I mean, bolts and bolts. People stacking up 10, 11, 12 bolts of fabric. Well, I have over $100,000 in backstock fabric of my own. That's my, for my retail stock. But, um, I'd rather not, you know, cut away from a lot of that because, um, I also do children's clothing line and some other things. And I hate to waste my own stuff. You know, I'll help a little bit, but I, I just, you know, if, thing is that they're advertising they're going to cover the whole cost and why are they not doing it but it's so scammy to me so anyway i go up there with i think it was like three or four bolts and um maybe five and and so i'm watching and the girl that had the shirt with the vulgarities on it had got a basket she had about probably 15 20 spools of black little thread um, and then she had a bolt of some black fabric with some hoodoo looking stuff on it. And then she had a whole bolt of muslin. And I said, so is that the stuff that you use for your mask? Oh yeah. And I've even designed one that'll fit over man's beard. It's great. She says, I've been making a ton of them. And I said, wow. And, and I said, so, uh, what, what is... What, what are you using for liner? Because it's a waste to use the color fabric because it's so expensive. Um, and she said, oh, no, I just use muslin. And I said, muslin? Muslin's a real light weave. Um, and it's very see-through. If you can hold this stuff up to the light and it's see-through, that you don't want to use that for a face mask for one. Um, and you don't want to use polyester because it's... it's, it's uh, um, uh, the coronavirus will adhere to it. Um, you really don't want to use a polyester cotton mix because, again, the virus will adhere to it uh, and it just gets too hot. 
you know if you use a heavy heavy fabric or a felt or uh, um, a polyester it's just way too hot for a human being to wear okay um, they're gonna get to the point where they're just gonna take it off and not wear it or leave it baggy which that doesn't do you any good at all um, for you know safety and, and healthy purposes um, and to live uh, so anyway I thought hmm and she, and she was bragging like she had made tons of them and this and that. Well, so when I'm watching these fabrics that she's handing to them, she had this entire, like, new bolt of this black hoodoo fabric. And it, it really looked like a little bit of poly mix with a cotton. Um, and they're just unrolling this entire bolt. Okay, this black hoodoo stuff. And I'm like, why would you make something depressing when, I mean, people are dying? I would do something happy. You know, it would be such a better psychological thing, more positive effect. So anyway, she's doing both of us. I'm looking at, at my kid and I'm like, you know, I'd swear this girl's making curtains, you know. And, and I mean, really. And then she got the muslin and she got yards and yards of that. But it wasn't enough to match the black fabric alone. Okay, so if you're using it for a liner, then why didn't you just get the whole bolt? You know, because you got yards and yards of that black. Not to mention the other ones that she had got. Um, she got some other go go y looking stuff. And I mean, just a ton of fabric. And um, so I thought, wow, you know, I thought that was pretty amazing, you know, and but yet. Um, I said, you know, you'd save more money if you used the big spools, the commercial spools, like you use on a serger, and then just use a cast off with it. And they may have some here. If not, they'll have some at Walmart where you can make one out of a coffee can and a hanger real easy and, and throw a couple rocks in the bottom. And she's, she's like, I don't know what that is. And I said, well, it's way cheaper to get a spool, a cone thread for like two, three dollars. I think it's like two forty or three dollars for it nowadays. I've got truckloads of it because I I sell commercially. But anyway, um I said, you know, it saves you so much money and it would save the store money on giving it away, you know, it uh instead of buying like fifteen spools of black thread. And um uh when you can pay, you know, three dollars for just about what's in those fifteen spools. So it's a huge amount of thread on comb thread. And it's a better made thread too. But she's like, wow, I didn't know that. I had to check that out. So she goes piddling on her way out to the, the, the counter. And, you know, that day they were just like taking the stuff, folding it up, stuffing it in bags. And I, I they didn't ring it up or anything. I said, I, I have to sign for it or nope. And, and uh, so I'm like, huh, how can I just give that stuff away like that? So uh, the stuff they gave me that day was this stuff now this and they told you what fabric she had to buy because they had the little stickers on them it was like the lowest clearance stuff they had in the back this is like outdoor fabric like duck or something it's almost like a canvas and that's really heavy and this one is too that's just really really heavy and then this is a real thin cotton Okay, that I got, you know, do children's stuff. And then, uh, and then this cherry stuff is like a duck, too. And then I got the muslin, which this has been washed since, because before I washed it, it was like beige and, and real see-through. I got that to use as a liner with these. And I thought, you know, I'll just get those done, and then I'll come back and get some more fabric the next time. Because I sew pretty fast. But, um, uh, so walked out with this stuff. Um, when I went to the counter, I had to pay for this one. The damn muslin was high as hell. Um, that was not cool. I was so mad when I left. I said, man, you know, we could have bought food with that, you know? I mean, I don't mind doing something kind, but I've got to be careful of myself and my family, you know? So, anyway... Went in the next day, and they and 
the manager said, oh, we're not doing that anymore. We, we're not doing that program anymore. I said, but it's on the website. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this store, the Joanne stores aren't, aren't participating in that program anymore. And I'm like, huh? I said, but it's still on the website. So, well, we're just not doing it because we've just had, you know, tons of yardage go out the door, you know, this week. And we just can't afford to just give any more away. And I was like, huh? So then I had to go up to the store up by there. Decided to um, drop in again. And then ask them for one of the kits for the sewing the face mask, right? And so a girl hands me one. And it has two. I don't know where it's at. But it had two. Eight inch pieces of obviously of scrap. Two. Two eight inch pieces. And then a, a, um, a spool of thread. And a little piece of simple piece of paper of instructions, which was the original instructions from the website uh, the first time. And, and I said, um, is this it? And I said, yep. And I, and I said, but it has thread with it. And I said, the first time I come up here, they refused to pay for any of the thread. <coughs> and the girl says, oh, no, that, that, that Joanne Fabrics pays for the thread. I went, okay, well, thank you. So got that. The next time I went up, uh, they said they didn't do it. They don't do the face mask, free face mask kits at all. You have to buy it. So then uh, a few weeks later, um... Uh, I went in and let's see actually I ordered on the internet ordered some stuff on the internet for uh, curbside pickup Because every time I'd go up there. they would have like 25 people standing out front in line Because they limited the store uh, to 14 people in the store at one time And so all these people were camping out. I mean even it before opening there was people out there with like little lawn chairs sitting there waiting for the doors to open Okay. And I'm like, oh, no way. I am not doing this. And any time of the day, I'd drive by there just to see if there was a line. And there was always a line. I called up there. I said, when do they not have a line? Oh, no, we have a line all the way to closing because we close at 7. I said, oh, okay. Uh, so I did an online order for something I needed. I just needed one thing. So I did an online order. And then I, when I talked to the store... The lady said, oh, we can't even get to them. It might be a couple days because I've already got 30 orders here. I said, well, that's fine. I said, I just ordered, you know, um, like four hours ago. I mean, I was just wondering if you have the face mask kits because they're still on the website. And and they said, uh, oh, yeah, well, you'll have to come in the store for that. I said, we may not have to come in the store for that. If I've got curbside pickup. Why would I want to come to the store? Because I'm not going to wait in a line of, you know, 15 or 25 people. It's not happening, you know. So she said, oh, they'll do it for you. I said, well, maybe make a note with my order. Gave her my name, everything. Well, so the next day I get an email about 11 o'clock in the day. Your order is ready. Okay, so I waited a couple hours, called over there, asked them if they really had it ready and and all that kind of stuff, and and to make sure it was kit in it, you know, for the face mask, the free kit. And she was like, "Yeah, okay." So anyway, I'm getting ready to head down there. I had to do some errands, and pay some bills, and so I called over there. I was on the phone with the girl for like thirty minutes total. I had the phone on speakerphone while I was driving around doing stuff. For them to look up my name, look up my order that, that's supposed to be ready. I said, well, I got the email sent to me that it was ready. And that was like this morning. And and she's like, oh, yeah, I've got to check on some things. And then they wanted to know my name. And then they wanted to know what I ordered. And then and I said, look, I paid for it online. It's one item, okay? And then they're supposed to have a face kit with it. And she said, well, let me check on this. Let me check on that. And it was like a 30-minute freaking phone call. I said, look, I'm already in the parking lot. They told me before I had to just pull up at the curb in front of the store, but this is a fire zone, you know. 
And um, I don't think it's right. I mean, if one of these businesses got on fire or something, I'm blocking the emergency lane. It's illegal to park in the emergency lane. And so, anyway, they were still clowning around, clowning around. Finally, they decide they've got the order. And I, I said, I'm parked right at, at the front door. So, about 15 minutes go by, and a real sweet little girl brings out the order. And I said, what about the face kit? The face mask kit? Oh, uh, well, you're supposed to come in the store for that. I said, not if I'm doing curbside pickup. I'm not. I said, I already told him this twice. And she said, okay, well, let me go see. And, and I said, you still have face kits, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like a different story every day you go up there. So she says, uh, she says I wait about 20 more minutes. Girl who comes outside and, and brings me a face kit. And I throw her a tip, a uh, bottle of hand sanitizer. And she appreciated that. And... Um, so, uh, I got a kit and it was this one and it's got, this one's actually got a pattern in it because originally they just gave us this. Um, and then it's got the instructions and then it's got way more fabric than the one that I have with two eight inch pieces. This is probably... This is like an end cut off a bolt, looks like. Um, actually, this one's just about a yard, but it's not like a 46 or 41 or 36 inch wide. It's shorter than that. So it's a scrap piece. But this feels like cotton polyester. I don't know. I would know what after I wash it. And it's matching thread. Okay. Then I go up there the other day and buy some uh, interior fabric um, for a vehicle. And asked them for a kit, and I said they didn't have any. Went up another day, uh, and I got this and a thread that does not even match. Um, this thread. I guess you don't have to be matching if you want to try to keep from dying. And this is a little tiny piece of fabric. Here. And if you're doing the little rectangle ones, that will probably make four. Um, and then the girl said, oh, and you've got to bring this back to the store. I said, well, before they said that we just, you know, donated to whatever hospital. And, and she said, oh, no, it's got to be brought back to the store. And I was like, yeah, well, that's the way... They were supposed to be doing it in the first place because that's what it said on the website. I mean, you would just get people fabric away and then just, you know, let them walk out the door with it. And you don't know what's going on with it. Um, Because there are some non-honest people out there. Uh, and, and she said, no, you have to bring it back to the store. So I was like, hmm. So, you know, it's amazing because right, right about... 15 days ago, all of a sudden, you know, they want to shut all the Michaels down and all the, um, what is that other one? Hobby Lobby. They were way on Hobby Lobby wanting to shut them down. And Hobby Lobby said, oh no, we're an essential store. And they were like, why are you an essential store? Because we we have the supplies for the face masks. But if you look on their website or call them and ask them about the supplies for the face masks, they said, yeah, we have fabric, which I've seen a very small amount of fabric in their stores. Um, and I was shocked to see it because I'd never noticed fabric being in a, in a, in a hobby lobby before. And, um, their fabric's not cheap. You trust me, buddy. No, no, no. And so, um, that would be the last place I'd buy fabric from. And so, anyway, uh, they don't give away any free kit or anything. But they were screaming Mimi because, you know, Joann's is staying open, being a craft store, craft store, uh, that they decided to have fabric and, and claim that they needed to be open to make face masks with. But you got to go buy it. And it's like, you know, why are we getting so scammy? You know? Um, I'm really disappointed with Joann's. Uh... I went up there yesterday, and uh, I asked about the face mask kit. And it's all the same people who work there, pretty much. And uh, they said, oh, no, we don't have any. 
I asked the girl at the county table, where's the face mask kit? We don't have any. Mm. So, I don't know. But, uh, uh, what a scam. Um, I don't appreciate it. I mean, they, were, they had some uh, video that said calling all sewers around the world. Uh, um, we need people to make, you know, surgical face masks, da, 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 da. And we'll give you all the supplies for free. Do we really need to do this to help, you know, with the coronavirus thing, blah, blah, blah. And um, they've since changed the videos and all the description on the Joanne Fabrics website. Um, and now they've got some different stuff on there. And then, um, the one they had before where they were doing the video making it, they were putting pins all through it. You can't put pins through the thing. Because it opens up the fabric and it allows the coronavirus molecules to go into it. Um, cotton fabric is 100% cotton is the best way to go, but it has a huge amount of shrinkage. And any fabric from these fabric stores, you got to wash it. Because that stuff shrink like a bat out of hell. And this is yards and yards. And this shrunk um, more than half, actually. And that's just um, soaking it in the kitchen sink with hot water and soap all day. And then putting it in a hot dryer. And, um, wow. Because if you put this raw fabric in with no finished seams and all that, it will shred up really bad in the washer. But you always, as a rule, if you're a real seamstress, you wash all your fabrics before you make your garment in the event there's going to be any shrinkage. Um... I mean, when I first got real serious with sewing, I had taken it since sixth grade. I was in high school, in parochial school, and I was in a sewing class, and oh, my teacher was the greatest, Miss Bailey. And I was going to make a three-piece suit, fully lined and faced, everything. And um, uh, she said, oh, you got to wash all your stuff first. And I'm like, why? And she said, well, because the percentage of the fabric you've selected um, uh, I had a khaki fabric that was, uh, poly cotton and, but mostly cotton. Um, it kind of felt like linen. It was very nice. And, um, she said, you know, it's got a portion of cotton in it. So you really, you need to pre-wash it because it's been in the store and everybody's touching it and it's been shipped and this, that, and the other. And she says, and then, you know, it's going to have a bit of shrinkage because it's got some cotton in it. And in those days, everybody was doing jeans. And jeans is 100% cotton. And let me tell you how stupid you look. If you're sewing some really rad jeans and you didn't pre-wash your fabric or take in the figures for shrinkage, uh, because once you get done, you might wear it one day and then wash it and then it doesn't fit you anymore. Always, always, always wash these fabrics. And especially stuff like Joanne.